In a recent phone survey, a respondent was asked, which is worse, ignorance or apathy? The respondent replied, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> you are neither ignorant nor apathetic. You do know and you do care. That's why you're here today graduating. By pursuing what some consider a non-traditional education path, you have shown yourself to be someone who plot their own course, who develop your own plan, and most of all, follow through on that plan. And for that, you should be very proud, all of you. What you have learned, what you've gained in knowledge, and of course, achieving this degree, none of it, none of it can be taken away from you. It's yours. But it's also yours to do with as you may. Will it lead to furthering your skills, advancement in your career? Is it just the beginning of a lifelong quest for even more knowledge to serve as a foundation for lifelong learning? Only you, only you can answer that question or those questions. You know, formal education does, degrees are very valuable. Lifetime earnings, for example, increase exponentially with a degree. Many job advancements, as many of you already know, are conditioned on a degree. I pursued a second degree and my older daughter actually has me beat. She has three. The University of Maryland Global Campus is a great institution respected across the world with over 90,000 students. And while I would be the last one to deter you from pursuing additional advanced degrees, it's important to understand that advancing your knowledge doesn't have to solely take place in a formal setting, in a university. Now at this point, I'm sure President Mieris is probably thinking, why did we invite this guy? We want more students, not fewer. But let me digress and explain why. I did not do especially well in economics as an undergraduate, where I pursued the traditional path after high school, I went to college. Uh, I was young. My grades were not so hot for, in economics. After graduation, however, on my own accord, I wanted a better understanding of political econo economics. So I read more books of my own choosing because of my interest. I wanted to better understand how the economy worked. My motivation? Because I wanted to change how things were working. I wasn't satisfied. I felt then, and I still feel today, that our economy doesn't work for all people. And there's still far, much too much, income inequality in our society. And some years later, as a legislator, I wanted to learn more about other topics, the environment, money and politics, taxation, to name just a few. I began to research, for example, how money influenced and shaped politics, but more importantly, what solutions were out there to reverse that course. I looked at actions in other states. I read critical policy, nonfiction, while I prefer fiction, to better understand how dark money is corrupting politics. This personal search, and again, I want to underline personal search, for knowledge didn't provide me with an additional degree. But it better informed me and assisted me in the work I was and continue to do. Just last Sunday in the New York Times, uh, one op-ed writer, a gentleman by the name of uh, Nicholas Kristof, um, wrote an op-ed. And he wrote about the big advice that university students are always asking him for. While I frequently disagree with Mr. Kristoff, in this case, I thought his advice was very sage. And let me mention two of the four recommendations he made. The first one, connect to a cause greater than yourself. Connect to a cause larger than yourself. Kristoff said that many students, particularly young students, followed a certain dictum, which he didn't like, of spending the first third of your life studying the second third of your life making money, and the final third giving back. He, of course, and I agree, don't think you should wait till the final third to start giving back to others. And I agree. Find a cause. Advocate for the voiceless. Organize in your community. 
work for your church, synagogue, or mosque, work to stop climate change, or work on behalf of social and economic justice, consider helping the homeless, whatever it is, that's your choice. But pick an area where as a volunteer, or if an opportunity arises and you're lucky enough, within your career chosen path, that goes beyond your own personal needs. I can tell you it will be satisfying and provides a good moral balance to the rest of your life. His second recommendation is escape your comfort zone. Escape your comfort zone. To some degree, you've already done that by enrolling at UMGC, and that is extremely laudable. We all tend to stay with people and places we know. It's in some ways, it's human nature. We're comfortable there. But I encourage you to seek out other places and other people that you don't know, that you're not familiar with. Explore another culture. People in other continents, whether it's Europe, Asia, Latin America, for example, have a much broader world view than people in the United States. They view politics differently, they view ideology differently than many people in the United States. From uh, Belgium to Bolivia to Beijing, people reflect different perspectives. The greater our knowledge base and the more lenses we can use to better see, the more informed we are. It's a, not a matter of getting an opportunity to explore, it's about taking the opportunity to escape your normal path, whether it's with people or with places. But it's important to understand this doesn't have to take place in a foreign country. It can happen in the United States, it can happen in Maryland, or in your very own community. So today, in just a few minutes, you'll receive your finally well-earned degree, a tremendous achievement. At this point, many speakers might interject or possibly conclude with, and now the world is your oyster and anything is possible. I will not be that speaker. Are there tremendous opportunities? Absolutely. And that should be exciting. Unfortunately, there are also plenty of obstacles ahead, or should I say, obstacles that remain. Since you have already faced many of them in your job, your life, or society at large, the fight to find decent jobs with decent pay and earn sick and vacation leave, income inequality, and un sadly, discrimination, whether it be ageism, gender, race, sexual orientation, whatever. Discrimination remains. And with millions of people and families uninsured or underinsured, healthcare is a challenge, although in my view, healthcare should be a right and not a privilege. Thank you. So yes, there are challenges in our society, but if there's one group of people who understands those challenges, both personal and societal, it's you. You understand that. Not only are you better prepared for these challenges, you have shown to have the vision, the fortitude, and the commitment to be successful. Now, as uh, President Miera said, um, this accomplished didn't happen in isolation. Um, that we're, you're uh, achieving your degree today. And, and I believe that we want to thank your family and network of friends. And, and I'm sure as you worked on that degree, there were sacrifices by others and probably more than a few disruptions in family life. So again, to every mother or father, sister, brother, son, daughter, grandparent, significant other, uh, your support has been very important to the graduates today and I think we all want to thank you again. So, to you, the 2019 graduates of the University of Maryland Global Campus, I applaud this achievement. This is your day. You are deserving. Be proud. Be very proud. Thank you.